quitting is the only way to, to ensure failure mm -hmm. because everybody in 2008, 2009 that thought this is the end of the world, I can't believe it. Guess what? They're still trucking. They're still doing something. And I guarantee you, most of them have recovered and gotten to a better place than they were prior to that. Right. Most of them, yep. I would argue. So again, as bad as it could be, it's your choice. Now, you could choose to lose your family. You could choose by, by making bad decisions, but you are in control of that. You can choose to lose your, your health and your fitness, but that's your choice. No, no economy can take that away from you. Right. How you treat your wife, how you treat your husband, how you treat your kids, how you uh, treat your, uh, your family members, like that's up to you. Mm -hmm. How you handle your health, the nutrition that you take in, that's up to you. Um, so again, you, you can lose everything and still live better than 95% of the globe. going on ty what's up what's up how's uh how's the week been it's been a good week man it's a um, week leading up to we're about to do a little family camp up in colorado so so when this goes live you're in colorado I'm, i'll be in colorado like, it's like inception totally like we're disconnected i know well, different layers of i don't think that's reality. how it works <laughs> i'm not pretty sure like you're in colorado right now how are, how are you here how are you how are you talking on the radio <laughs> <laughs> the radio how old are you <laughs> Boy, what are y'all doing in Colorado? Uh, so, yeah, we're doing like Sunday to Sunday, seven days. Of, it's a family uh, camp? It's a family camp. So, PAO, the, um, the NFL, uh -huh. Major League Baseball, NA, NHL, like ministry. Um, there's a, a family camp in Estes Park that we're, uh, we're heading up to. And so, it's, a, it's like a, it's a easier, more luxurious version of like kind of a dude ranch. So there's horses. And so we'll like be doing like some horseback riding and we're going to be doing some pinning, which is like sorting cows through uh -huh. pens and stuff like that. And my kid, there's gonna be a little rodeo for the kids. That's and, awesome. Um, they're jacked up. Where's but, that? Where's that's this part? So it's North of Denver. So okay. it's, uh, it's like Breckenridge area. All no, that? that's, that's West. So it's, okay. it's North, um, and like boulder uh, kind of on the way okay. to, but up in the mountains um so it's about an hour and a half two hours outside of denver um but man it's beautiful up there uh and so we're, we're just excited we're we're doing a drive i was so just you, gonna ask you driving or flying we're driving um Oof. because i mean a lot of reasons but i love driving like i love it like road trips are my favorite and we have not done it really since the twins have been born so that's five years so we haven't done like a good road trip yeah and so it'll be interesting are y'all gonna do are you a road tripper that you like to stop every now and then see the um, sights? you just yeah so, so we've kind of been i like to go so we're gonna we're gonna drive overnight so okay. we're gonna leave at like dinner time the night before it's like a 13 hour drive like if you go straight through we're gonna stop but like we can log some miles for sure while the kids sleep. So yeah. get in, get them. And then, you know, ho hopefully they're down by like nine, sleep from like nine to seven in the morning, cover a big portion, get a lot, gain a lot of ground. Yeah. So we'll see again, see how they sleep. They're at a kind of a weird age. Like it, the, the twins. Yeah. It'll be interesting. And so when you get there, you're not going to sleep. You're just going to be up for, yeah, I'll just roll through. So I'll have to. I'll sounds have to miserable. Do, I have to do kind of a day nap leading okay. up to it. So yeah. uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I went to. Uh, we would go to family. They were called family camp with the organization Young Life. Oh yeah, and it was yeah. somewhere. Have you been to that, Scott? Yeah, yeah. I've that? worked Young Life camps two summers in oh, in nice. Colorado. Uh, I did both of mine. I did in North Carolina, but I've okay. been to uh, Frontier and Crooked Creek. Yes, where's mm. where is Frontier? Because I haven't been since I was a kid. is outside of, oh, it's a small little t boulder. Okay. Boulder, outside yeah. of boulder. Okay. okay. Yeah, we, we used to go during the summers, and that was so much fun. It's yeah. the same, yeah. thing, you know, ride horses and uh -huh. frisbee golf in the mountains, fishing, yep. all that. Hiking. I mean, hiking. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's like, it, and it's really fun. cool. What they've done is um, it, the, the schedule, like there's things for the kids. So like they're going to do a kid's lunch while the parents uh -huh. go do like a horseback 
lunch ride. And then, and then you get there and then they're going to do like a little session on parenting without the kids. And then they, you know, the kids have their, some activities, but like most of the week we're doing stuff all together. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's like three or four times that it's like, okay, Hey, this is going to be parent focused, going to focus on just discussing marriage, where you guys are at, how you guys are doing, uh, let the kids go do some things. Um, and all, all faith-based and, um, and then, uh, and then like, parenting it's just i'm really excited yeah. really excited about this yeah. and there's like very very little cell service so uh 100 committing to putting technology away that's so awesome a week for us without technology is is gonna, gonna be, be really, really good y'all are gonna be yeah that's gonna be great for all y'all. Yeah. or you might kill each other one of the two one of the two <laughs> and i'm guessing it's gonna be on the drive home i'm pretty <laughs> sure it's because yeah. I, I already know my daughter see is gonna be like are we there yet She's like, she's in that phase right now. How many more minutes until we're there? Yeah. Um, 1,227 more minutes. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should rent a car, drive to Colorado, and then fly back home. Sounds good. The idea sounds good. Yeah. It's actually not a bad idea. Holy smokes. That way you get, you know, instead get the of road a 13-hour drive, you're doing a yeah, two and a half hour I've flight. got three days to put that idea together. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that's true. The problem Probably is, is, is because of what we're doing and with four kids, we got a lot of stuff. That's true. You know, and, and so like packing boots and jeans yeah. and, you know, it's going to get cold at night. Like the logistics of it. Yeah. It's just, and I, and I like driving. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. It doesn't bother My me next door neighbor was, said he was in Santa Fe last week. Uh -huh. He said it was 80 degrees during the day. And 55 at night. Yeah, so that's same here. It's going to be, it'll be like high 70s, low 80s, and then low 50s at night. That's amazing. And I'm like, yes. He said they drove from Santa Fe to Amarillo. When they left Santa Fe in the morning, it was 55. When they got to Amarillo, whatever time, it was 109. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. A 50 degree Ugh. increase. No thanks. On that drive. Yeah, so yeah. anyway. Well, that's awesome, man. I, yeah. that, I love Colorado. I don't, I'm not sure there's any better place in the summertime than Colorado, in my opinion. Um, you, you can have your beaches. That's great. You can have yeah. your lakes. I love those. See, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, with I'm, you there. I'm all about mountains yeah. in the summer. Yeah. Beaches are for wintertime when you can get yeah. away from the cold weather, right. go to the beaches. I'm, I'm all about that. I'm with you there. But yeah, I, I would say, cause I grew up in California, Sierra Nevada, same, same kind of deal. Um, you know, Texans, they love Colorado mm -hmm. cause it's close, but I mean, I would argue Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. Yeah. I've all, never done any of those. Are, and those are on my list for sure. Strong for sure. So uh, well, before we jump into today's topic, yeah. we did want to thank our partners, uh, first and foremost, Sleep Number. Yeah. And when I climb into my Sleep Number bed, my 360 smart bed at night, and I lay down, you know, it's kind of firm at first. My side of the bed is kind of firm at first. Mm. Wait, then, I'm sorry. What's firm when you first get in bed? My, well, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I, I zoned out. I was looking at it. So. <laughs> My side of the bed is firm. It's a family show. <laughs> but as soon as I lay down, it's like, it's like the same routine. Every night. I lay down on my back, turn over to my left side, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, that pressure, I forget what it's called, the pressure thing. Yeah, it starts to slowly sink me in and starts yep. to get all my pressure points just yep. right. And that, it's almost like, it's almost like that is serotonin for me. Dude, when or you know it's like, all right, a now sleep, I'm, now I'm gonna sleep pill for me. Because as soon as that happens, yeah. I don't remember anything else. <laughs> it, all I remember is my alarm going off the next day. That's yeah. how instant it is for me. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like the best sleeping pill yeah. ever invented is this, is this 360 smart. Is bed. it the sound? It's, the, it's both. It's the sound and the feeling of the air just kind of going out. Yeah. And okay. just, it just, it's, it's almost like it's just, it's hugging me. Yeah. It's like a pillow just so, engulfing me into just... Let me ask you, did you get, um, did you get pillows? Yes. When you got, okay. Yep. Uh, so that's a highly underrated thing that you need to like, when you go into sleep number, because I know when you listen to this, you're going to go check it out. Yep. Look, don't even go in there planning to buy it. Just go through the assessment, go through the whole experience, because I'm telling you like, it, whether you can afford it right now or not, you're going to figure out a way to pay for this yes. because it is incredible but these pillows highly underrated yeah. so i ended i got i got the body pillow and then i got like a regular pillow and do you when you talk about sleep because i'm a side sleeper too most of the time the sleep numbers kind of changed me a little bit because um 
I, I do like to prop my feet up a little bit because my back feels amazing mm -hmm. in the morning. I haven't, I haven't utilized that. Yeah, dude, literally. So it's, and it's, and it's subtle too. It's not a lot, but I, what I'll do is, is I'll, and then it keeps me on my back, mm -hmm. which then when I wake up in the morning, you just hop out of bed and you don't just have so that good. stiffness and anything like that. Um, but back to my original question, do you sleep with a pillow between your knees? No. See, sleep number has pillows that are built for, for that knees. and like yeah. perfectly for it. And that when I get that pillow and I'm on my side and I hear that, it's like, dude, how do you ever wake up? It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Go back and listen to our last episode. Uh, and it's the toughness. That's right. That I learned from working out. That's the, that's the thing. The, the sleep number makes it exponentially. You, yeah. you have to be much more, you have to be much tougher to get yeah. out of the sleep number. Yeah. Bed. And I was talking about going to Colorado. Um, part of the reason I'm driving is because I'm strapping my sleep number bed on the top of my truck. <laughs> and because uh, I've not, you've been spoiled. I am not <laughs> going to sleep on yeah. another bed. Yeah. And, and back to the money thing, then we'll close it out with this. If you're worried about the cost of it, totally get it, especially yeah. right now. Yeah. Totally understand that. However, Arguably, sleep is the most important factor of being productive that yes. you can possibly. That's the one change you can make to yeah. be more productive. Yep. And more productivity equals more. Yeah. Invest into your recovery. Right. I'm telling you. And my, sis, my sister-in-law told me this. She got one years ago. And she's like, yeah, like you're telling me you won't spend, you know, five, six thousand dollars on a bed, but you'll spend fifty thousand dollars on a car. Yep. You spend... 10 times more time in your bed than you do a car. That's right. That's a good way to put it. But nobody sees you in your, in yeah, your bed. That's right. You guess what? You but can't flex what? your bed. <laughs> see the results that you get from the that's bed. Right. That's, that's right. what they see. What's a better flex than a car? A well-rested mind. That's right. Boom. <laughs> so get yourself to sleepnumber.com. Get yourself to sleep number store and feel the benefits that we're talking about here. That's right. And then our second partner, when you're not sleeping, we said this yesterday, when yeah, you're not yeah. sleeping and you're awake and you're alert and you're utilizing all that recovery, yep. get yourself to Chalk Talk. And I talked about, work. again, Colorado, right? I love road trips. Uh, Chalk Talk is a great road trip, except it's not even that long of a road no. trip. It's just I a short drive. It. It's a short drive. Up right 75. up 75. <laughs> <laughs> but it really is so easy to get to. It's it's a beautiful drive. You drive up 75. You got some rolling hills, um, and you really you cross the border of Oklahoma, and there it is in Durant, right. Oklahoma. And they have everything that you could ever want. You could spend a weekend. You could spend a day. You could spend multiple days. Just move in. That's what I just mean. live there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If they'll if, accept if you. you. We talk about like really taking taking advantage of this one shot in life. I want my one shot to be spent at Choctaw. Go live at a Choctaw. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Unlimited earning potential. Every weekend, they're giving away six hundred plus thousand dollars. There's a two million dollar giveaway this month, so they're giving away tons of money. Shows, restaurants, pools, uh, four star hotel. It is unbelievable. I dare to say you never have to leave Choctaw. Just you saying. can earn an income. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got food. Yep. You've got showers. Yep. You've Access got entertainment. To unlimited sports. Unlimited sports. What? It what really, else is It's there? the mecca. What else? Is it there? is utopia. Yeah. So get yourself to sleep number, or sorry, to Choctaw. Both. After you've slept on your sleep number, yes. get yourself to Choctaw. Yep. All right, to the topic at hand. And we've got no notes today. We've got nothing written down, nothing really planned. This is more just what's on our mind. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but what's on what's my on mind. What's on Ben's mind is more, <laughs> more in line I don't with know what. if people really want to <laughs> dig into my mind, but no, I, I think right now, you know, uh, the last two and a half years have been wild. We understand that. 2020 set in motion some pretty crazy events, you know, politically, socially, economically. And we started to come out of that, it felt like, towards the end of the last year. Mm -hmm. And then to start 2022, it just feels like now we're headed back to that same scary uncertainty that we were in. And what was it, March 2020? Yeah, I would say, when it, when it I would say yeah, March, April, May, June. Yep. Where is that like really like the world's going to end? And, and with the nature of what Tyler and I do for our day job, for mm -hmm. our real job, is we are paid essentially to be up with what's happening yep. in the economy, what's happening in the market. What trends are what happening. What trends are going on. Mm -hmm. That's part of the role that we play in our day job. And so part of that is being mindful of 
what's happening with the economy. Mm -hmm. And the thought that keeps spinning in my brain, especially, and, and it feels like it's really ramped up the last week or so, honestly, the, the fear mm -hmm. and the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And part of that is, you know, the Fed came out last week and they raised interest rates higher than it's been raised since 1994 yep. is what I read. Inflation's at a record, uh, you know, record highs for the last 40 years. Um, you're paying more for literally everything yep. that, that you pay for on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, jobs are good at the moment, mm -hmm. but that's actually in a weird way contributing to why everything's it so is. expensive yep. because everybody's, yeah. you know, doing a little bit better. It, it seems though that the reserves are starting to run out on most people mm -hmm. and now we're starting to tap into credit. And then that to me is the step now right before. Now there's that full cycle, right? right? With the Fed raising rates. Right. So... I don't know. There's just a lot going on. And so yeah. I just wanted to just have a conversation about, mm -hmm. you know, what, what our thoughts are, what, how are we handling this? What are, what's, what is our mentality in this moment? What are we going to do mm -hmm. over the course of the next few months and even years, assuming this keeps going the way that it's going. We've yeah. talked about this before, Tyler, you and I are relatively young. Mm -hmm. The last time we went through something major like this, other than 2020, was 2008, 2009, 2010. I was, that was right when I was in college. So I was 1,000% oblivious. Yeah. It, it, I knew nothing. Yeah. I think back and I'm like, how, did I, how was I so naive? I knew yeah. nothing. And part of that is because I was focused on myself. But the other part of that is I didn't have any money anyway. Yeah. It's not like it mattered to me yeah, what yeah. the economy was doing. Yeah, and I was saying, um, the, only, the only insight that I had into that um, yeah, I hope my parents don't get upset about this, but um, I mean, they got crushed in the market, Did like they? crushed. Yeah. Um, like the stock market, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So my dad had just retired, and um, and they had they had trusted an advisor, and everybody did. Uh, everybody did get crushed, but they they were positioned, I think, in a in a really tough spot, even for that. Mm -hmm. so they got crushed and so i just remember it was a really hard time like thankfully like you know my dad just kept kept working he kept he kept pushing kept, and they and they got out of it they had some really hard times had to sell the house had, i mean there were some things that they had to do and go through that i didn't firsthand because i was i was um i just graduated i was playing in canada actually um and then and then i came back uh so this would have been um yeah, end of 2008, beginning of 2009. So it's still feeling it, right? People are still feeling it. But I, I had no money anyways. Yeah. So I was just broke regardless. Right. Um, and that was that portion of the story where I had first met Tiffany. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so it was, I felt it, but I, I don't know if I, I attributed that pain and suffering to the downfall. Um, but it, it, as far as right now goes, and, and, and I'll compare it to this. Um, is when you play in the NFL and, and I, and I felt this, you are making really, really good money. And when you're in the moment, why guys get in so much trouble is you feel like it's going to last forever, right? Times are good. Like, man, I'm, I'm getting, you know, five to six figure checks every single week, depending on who you are. And, I, you know, times are good. And this is never going to end. This money is never going to run out. I feel like we went through that same thing over the last couple of years because times have been so good. And then we went through the pandemic. But then now there was all this relief that was happening. Um, I think, you know, it really hurt some people and some businesses, but others like it grew, it only mm -hmm. grew them yeah. and times are really good and people are spending and people, everybody's put, I mean, the pool business in Dallas is better than it has ever been ever. there have been more pools put in in dallas than ever mm -hmm. and and it's like the, people are spending money on backyards or buying new houses overpaying for houses and i mean if times are really good people are spending people are living and that's great like if you've worked really hard and you've you've earned but if you have a mentality that it's never going to end and you haven't been diligent about living within your means when it does turn, it's scary. I mean, it is, it, it, it really is. Um, and so I think, you know, right now where, where we're at, and like you said, we, we're cyclical too. Our business is cyclical. Like if companies aren't 
growing, moving, then then our income takes a hit. Yep. And it's and it's directly correlated to the market. One of the things that Roger Staubach told me when I was, he said, here's a good thing about what we do, and we're on the tenant representation side. So what that means is is we represent the user of space, the occupier of space. And what Roger Staubach said, he says, hey, good economy, bad economy, companies are either growing or downsizing. They're always moving. But as we saw during the pandemic, it just takes a whole lot more work. Right. Right. You've got to be creative. You've got to find solutions. You got to find all these things. But I think the mentality is, is when it's really hard is, all right, I can't be on cruise control anymore. Mm. I've, if you were on cruise, right. hopefully you were not. Hopefully yeah. you've been diligent about, hey, look, hey, I've got to continue to, to put, my, put my foot on the gas and I got to continue to grow. And I can't just like, uh, I, I can't just, uh, rely on the good times mm -hmm. and that it's just going to, it's going to last forever. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I just think as, as we approach this, there's a ton of uncertainty, but the one thing you can be certain about is the effort and diligence you're putting into mm -hmm. whatever it is that you do. I think part of the fear is the unknown, mm -hmm. big part of the fear. Mm -hmm. Like I said, for us, not really knowing what 2008, 2009 was really like, mm -hmm. we're going into this, not you know unsure of what's and nobody really knows i'm not saying yeah. that but if you've experienced a couple of these before mm -hmm. you have somewhat of an idea of yeah. what to expect yeah and so part of that fear at least for me is well, what is this going to be like yeah because in my mind i go to the apocalypse that's just where my mind goes yeah you know scorched earth there's no resources everybody's out of work mm -hmm. for whatever reason that's just my mind just goes to worst case yeah. scenario and so what i've got to remind myself in these moments is the sky is not falling. Mm. Yes, it's tough. It's going to be difficult. We're in for probably a rough patch ahead. Mm -hmm. But I think about the things that are going well still. Yeah. The things yeah. I do have going. Mm -hmm. So you said it was really hard for your parents in 2008, but they still survived. They still got through it. They're still thriving today. Yeah. So it's likely that it's not going to end us. Mm -hmm. It just may be difficult for a minute. Yeah, let me ask you this. Um, and, and I'm asking you because I'm asking myself and I'm asking, you know, everybody uh, that's listening that feels this way is in that fear and stress of the unknown. Did you figure out the answer? Nope. Do you have, can you get the answer? Nope. So that fear and stress, that anxiety mm -hmm. that's created from that, what positive benefit is that providing? Right. And that's easy to say. Yep. Um, but we talk about it a lot. It's just the, the mindfulness, the presence, the awareness to recognize, okay, in that moment that I'm spiraling because I feel like the, the world's going to end, we're going to go straight walking dead. Mm -hmm. um, what is that doing? Yeah. If anything, it's, it's, it's distracting you from the tasks that you do have at hand, yeah. the opportunities that you do have at hand, worrying about what could happen, what might happen, what the trend is saying is going to happen, what the media is saying is going to happen, what your coworkers are going to say is, uh, what your coworkers say is going to happen. All that's doing is distracting you from the opportunities that you can control right now. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think that's what, what I think of is, is where, what am I paying attention to mm -hmm. in this moment? Mm -hmm. What are my coworkers saying? What is the media? You know, unfortunately, we've created an environment where there's a lot of money to be made mm -hmm. on catastrophe yeah. and fear and invoking fear. Mm -hmm. So do I want to be informed during this time? Absolutely. I yeah. don't want to just bury my head in the sand and pretend like nothing's going on. Yep. I need to be informed. But for me personally, I'm going to now be more mindful of what news outlets am I paying attention to? What yeah. stories am I? Is, is the source of this story just to try to drive fear so that I'll yeah. keep reading yep. and keep clicking? Or is there some legitimacy to this claim that they're making? Uh -huh. And so for me, it's going to be a balance of being informed, but not being overwhelmed with all the news. Yeah. And I think um, information gathering, yes, like you need to kind of understand, like, look at your sources. Where, where are you getting it? Is it a, is it a biased media source? Is it, uh, and we talked about this in the wisdom um, the wisdom book that we did, Wisdom Pyramid, like what are you looking at? What sources of information are you getting? If you're younger and haven't been through a cycle, maybe a good source of information would be 
a mentor or someone that has been through it, mm -hmm. been through a couple cycles. Like we've got some guys in our office that have been through two cycles in Dallas, like the the 80s, the banking crash in the 80s in Dallas, and and then you know even the dot com bust, and then the 2008, 2008 yep. right? So they've been through those, they've seen those things. The great thing about you know someone that's got experience and wisdom is that they may not have done it right, they may not, have, yeah. but they can share their experiences and things that they wish that. In hindsight, right? Hindsight's twenty twenty. Well, they have hindsight because they have been through it. What would they have done differently? If if you were to approach 2000, 2008 differently, what would you have done prior to two thousand eight? Okay, maybe let's learn from those things. And and then also too, like I say, ask someone, but also like, is that someone that you trust? Is that mm -hmm. someone that you want to um, a, a life that you want to? emulate or replicate yeah. because that's important too. It's like some clown that, you know, drives a McLaren, but you know, is, is living month to month on his paycheck. Oh yeah. Are you sure you should be taking advice on someone that's leveraged everything in their life? You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, no, that's like, a, a huge point. Seeking wisdom from someone who's been there before that you trust. That's yeah. huge. Absolutely. Scott, what do you think? You're in a different business than us. What, what are y'all saying in your, on your team? I mean, we've got clients that, uh, across the board and you know a couple of our big clients are mortgage companies mm -hmm. and um you know like six months ago i was reading reports that wells fargo was laying off most of their mortgage division mm -hmm. um so you know i we're a little unsure what the future is going to look like but um you know we'll pivot we'll adapt adjust and, and make changes as as needed mm -hmm. um people are still going to need our services. Yep. So, but it's, you know, there's a little bit of fear, a little bit of angst there, but uh, you know, it's, I can only control so much. Right. So I just try to focus in on what I do have control yeah. of. Yeah. yeah. That fear and that angst can be a good thing. You know, it can drive you towards action. Like you're talking about yeah. Tyler. It can, if you can, if you're able to shelve what you're not able to control and yeah. focus what you are, that fear can push you forward. Yeah. That now all of a sudden you've got a sense of urgency. Maybe you didn't have before when things are good. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's a good point, Scott, that humans are great at adapting. We're great at evolving. And really, and again, this is an, somewhat ignorant because I haven't lived through it before, but from what I understand, like these type of resets are necessary yeah. for a healthy economy. Yeah. It's good to have somewhat of a take a step mm. because now think about all the opportunities that are created out of this. What new job sectors what investment opportunities will you now have yeah. if you've been yep. diligent and disciplined with your income? You know, yeah. you're going to be able to have opportunities now to do things you wouldn't have been able to with prices just continuing to rise, rise, yeah. rise. If you've been disciplined. Now, if you haven't been disciplined, you're rightfully so. There's some fear there. Yeah, but it's not the end of the world. It's not still the end of the world. either. Right. right. And there's there's two two points from from that that I think it, we, we can spend a little bit of time on is is one is the opportunity. Um, how many people are going to bow out and just, it's too hard. Yep. We talk about it all the time, the toughness, the resiliency right now. There's a shortage. So you, if, let's just say, and again, maybe this sounds like we're saying it's inevitable that, you know, we're going to have this like crazy crash, but whether it does or doesn't, you can be ready for it. And what comes, what, what comes out of these types of challenges, right? Innovation opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Are you going to be the person that takes advantage? There were literally billionaires created during the pandemic. Yep. Billionaires. That's a good point. So as you look at it, and I tell my kids this all the time, and I said, listen, I'm raising y'all different than all of your friends because it's going to be like fishing in a barrel when you're an adult. If you, if you establish these tools and disciplines, it's going to be like fishing in a barrel because your competition isn't going to be, want to put in the work, mm. isn't going to want to do the hard things. And if you can do those things and learn those things early on or implement them, it is going to, your life, you can do anything that you want because yeah. the competition out there, it's not what it used to be. Well, think about what we talked about yesterday, the, the fruits of fitness, which I'm still hashtagging, still yeah. going to make it a trend. Yeah. I mean, think about some of those things we talked about, toughness, confidence. Mm -hmm. We're about to get to display those things. Yeah. We are getting to display those We're going to get things. humbled. We're going to get humbled. We are being humbled. Yeah. Those are the things that we are going to get to display here. And I love what you said, 
billionaires were created. Not that money is the end all Mm-mm. be all, but no. but the the point of that is opportunity. And it's a representation of our people taking advantage mm-hmm. of. You need the stress. You need the discomfort. Mm-hmm. Those are good for you in the long run. That's what fitness teaches you: is the stress and discomfort are going to make you stronger. Yep. And so yes, it's scary and there's fear, but just. Think about all the good that's going to come out of it. Yeah, and, and here's the other thing too: is it, it maybe it's depressing, maybe, it, but there's only one scenario, in my opinion, that is inevitably a negative outcome, right? So let's let's like let's walk through worst case scenarios here. Okay, let's just say the economy goes terrible. You've got a family. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm moving in with you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Worst case <laughs> We're scenario. We're up. Literally worst case scenario. That's the one scenario. That's the one scenario is Ben and his family moving with me. <laughs> uh, is, okay, you lose your job. Crap. Uh, what am I supposed to do now? Okay, you still have your family. You still have control of your health. You still live in the United States. Okay, you lose your house. Let's just say you lose your house. You can still go get a job. You can still, people still need goods and services. Mm -hmm. You can still, you move your family to a smaller house, an apartment. You still are living better than 95% of the people on planet Earth. Okay, so you still have your family, you still have control of your health. You still live in America. You still have freedom, hopefully. Okay, you... Through that process, you still, like it's perspective, you still live better than 95% of the planet. And guess what? You're going to learn things along the way. Mm -hmm. So the only scenario that is is ultimately negative, negative is morbid, but is if you die, if you don't live through that, you know? And and unfortunately, these downturns, we see an increase in those rates Mm -hmm. Um, and those rates, not by disease, not by act, by choice, we yep. see an increase in those. So my point is, is for those that maybe struggle with that, like, please, I just encourage you to start now mm-hmm. assessing your mental health. But that's the only way when you, you said quitting is the only way to, to ensure failure mm-hmm. because Everybody in 2008, 2009 that thought this is the end of the world, I can't believe it, guess what? They're still trucking. They're still doing something. And I guarantee you most of them have recovered and gotten to a better place than they were prior to that. Most of them, I would argue. So again, as bad as it could be, it's your choice. Now, you could choose to lose your family. You could choose by by making bad decisions, but you are in control of that. You can choose to lose your, your health and your fitness, but that's your choice. No, no economy can take that away from you. Right. How you treat your wife, how you treat your husband, how you treat your kids, how you uh, treat your, uh, your family members, like that's up to you. Mm-hmm. How you handle your health, the nutrition that you take in, that's up to you. Um, so again, you, you can lose everything and still live better than 95% of the globe. Yeah, I mean, the reality is most people are going to be okay. Yeah. Most people are yeah. going to be okay during this time. Yeah. They're going to take a hit, of course, yeah. but most of us are going to... Are you going to be one of those most? Mm-hmm. And that's up to you, to your point. Yeah. The other exciting thing, if you will, is our kids are going to be able to see us walk the walk yeah. during this time. We can tell them about hard work. We can tell them about perseverance. We can tell them about resiliency and suffering. We can tell them all that. We can read them books and that's yeah. all great. I hope you're yeah. doing that. Yeah. But these next few months and years, we're going to get to live it. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to live resilience. We're going to get to live enduring suffering. And again, I don't want to catastrophize. It's, I don't want to make it way worse than, cause I have no idea what's going to be. Yeah. But what I'm saying is we're about to find out when we get stretched, when we get pushed, what are we truly made of? That's right. We're about to get to display that. Yeah. Are we, have we been all taught these last few years when things are good? Because everybody can talk when things are good. Or are we about to actually walk the walk here? Mm-hmm. And what are your kids? We, we talk about this all the time. Monkey see, monkey do. Mm-hmm. Our kids, you, you had a great picture yesterday in your workout, and your son Rocco is behind you mimicking exactly what you, he's. 
You didn't make him do that. You didn't tell him, hey, go grab that PVC pipe and watch this. You didn't say that at all. He just did it naturally. Yeah. He sees what you do. He sees how you react. He sees how you act under stress. Yep. They're, going, they're so moldable right now at this age. <sighs> Crazy. And if they can see their mom and dad thrive in this moment, thrive when the tough gets going. Yeah, or, or struggle. And struggle's okay, too. I was, and, and I think you don't have to be perfect in front of your kids. And you can, and that's one thing Tiffany does a great job of is, is she said, like, we need to be honest with our kids. Like there's, there's parents. And I think our generation, our parents shielded us from a lot. Like, Hey, we're just going to, we're going to carry it on our back and their parents even more so before them, we're going to carry it on our back. We're not going to expose you to anything. We're just going to carry all the weight. And that's, and that's hard. It's okay. Because what you to your point is look, we, it's okay for your kids to know that it's a really hard time. Um, and it's okay, but what they need to see is they need to see the problem and then they need to see your parents working for the solution. That's right. And, you know, single parent, you know, parents, to whatever the home dynamic is, it's important for them to know that, hey, look, this is hard right now. Like, we're working really hard and, and we're doing this for, you know, for you, for each other. And it's okay to see, for them to see a struggle, but it's, like you said, it's most important to see us walk the walk of all the things that we've been saying that we were going to do or we want them to do. It's important to see for them to see us pursue that. Yeah, that's right. And you mentioned a second ago, another thing I'm going to focus on and continue to focus on is my fitness and taking care of my body. And what, what am I consuming? Uh, actual food wise, not just yeah. mentally, but you know, actual food wise. How am I still expressing my fitness? Because we talk about it week in and week out, all the benefits of fitness. So right now, the worst, the only way you compound a bad situation is by now just letting your body go to hell yeah. and not taking care of your physical yeah. body. Uh, Dr. Elaine Norton just posted, and we're going to actually go through the study here at some point, about depression and nutrition, how they're linked. Yeah. And so understand that when you're, when you're in this funk mentally – you can compound that, and it's really easy to compound that by now starting to eat really bad food. Yep. And skipping all your workouts. The problem is that just takes you down to that funnel, yeah. that hole even further. Yeah. So if you can't control what's going on in the economy, you can't control what's going on out there, you still can control what you do with your body. That's right. So that's what I'm going to continue focusing on is yeah. how am I taking care of my physical body? Because yep. a stronger body is a better body yep. in all aspects of life. Yeah, 100%. Like when your when you're fitness and nutrition – when those fall off, right? And like you said, we're going to go through this, the, the study, but, and I'm going to speak just for me. I'm not speaking for everybody because, um, because I'm, I'm not one of them scientists, you know, that, <laughs> but is I, it is directly, and I've talked about it, right? It is directly related to my mental health, right? And so when your mental health, whether you're dealing with anxiety, depression, um, that literally, it spirals. And what does that do? Now that bleeds over in your professional life. That leads in your productivity. That bleeds in your relationships. That bleeds over into everything. Mm -hmm. And not that fitness and nutrition is a fix-all be-all. We're not saying that. Um, so please don't get that twisted. But that is a very, very um, secure building block mm -hmm. to ensure a healthier life, right? right? And so when you say, all right, screw it. I'm going to stress eat. I'm going to go, I'm going to go get a bunch of fast food and I'm going to have ice cream and I'm going to have, look, those sporadically in moderation, fine. No, look, it is what it is. We're finding, we're trying to find a sustainable life, but when that is it and that is your solution, that is your escape, then all you're doing is avoiding the problem and you're making the problem worse. Yeah. yeah. So fitness for sure. Another thing I'm excited about is, you know, we talked about this a few weeks ago, how if 2000, September 11th had happened now, would it have divided us or would we, would we have still come together? You know, I think that this might be something that actually does. I'm starting to see hints that, yeah, people are blaming the current administration and doing all that, and that's fine. The, those are people trying to make money. But us normal people who aren't getting paid to spout off our opinions and, and do that, it feels like this is something that will bring us, unite us. We're all going through this together. Yeah. And so I'm excited about focusing on community during yeah. this time. And how can I help, you know, how can we help each other out? Yeah. How can we come together and yeah. face this head on? We're all in this together. 
Now, some people, again, with more wealth, they're going to be okay. But a lot of us are facing this together. And that's yeah. what I'm excited about. Yeah. Is maybe this can be something that finally, again, we're still going to have arguments and, and bickering and, and blaming. Oh. But I'm wondering if this is that thing that, that unifies us again. I hope so. I hope so. Because it, cause it can go two ways, right? It's inevitable that from a media side, each side's going to blame the other. Right. It's the other. It, it's this person's fault. It's it's that side's fault, no doubt. Um, my hope is that. Um, my hope is that that we have that neighborly love for each other, and not not saying people need to give out. If you're okay, give handouts out. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying though is be there for your brother and your sister. Mm -hmm. Right. If if you can help somebody, if you can bring a community together, if you can um, serve others during whatever lies ahead of us, whether we're good or bad, just mm -hmm. implement it now. But it, it can go that way. Um, you know, and then, you know, the, the alternative is a division, right? And, and you think it's bad now, a division of wealth and, and, the, and poverty, right? Yeah, the that haves and have could, nots is that, definitely going to increase could, for sure. That gap could grow. Yeah. Um, but my hope is, is this is a time because this is, like you said, this is an opportunity. Nothing brings people together. And I say people, all people together than going through adversity together. It's talk about CrossFit, talk about the community there, talk about team sports. Nothing brings people closer together than we're all experiencing adversity and we all have to rely on each other to move forward. Like right. that is, I, I agree with you. That's an exciting opportunity if if things continue to trend in a negative way economically but it also could go the other way sure it could right i, I just think that we've still all the majority of us have still been in a good enough position mm -hmm. it still hasn't quite hurt the majority of us yet mm -hmm. that we're still able to think about these ancillary fights that we have mm -hmm. But anytime you're really, truly going through something, you're not necessarily as worried about what bathroom so-and-so individual is using. Yeah. Or what little bickering fight this current administration versus the last yeah. one. Yeah. Those are more secondary arguments yeah, you agreed. now have because there's bigger fish on yeah. your plate. There's bigger fish yeah. to fry on your plate. Yeah. And so that's what I'm excited about is potentially, yeah. again, do I want people to suffer? No. But if we are going to go through that, I hope that it makes us unify as yeah. opposed to continue and splitting apart. So I'm not sure we can survive more division if this isn't something that can't yeah. unify us. Yeah. So that's what I'm excited about. And we touched on it, the, uh, maybe the last thing that we'll, we'll touch on here, you know, just for time's sake, but is reigniting that purpose that we all have. And the purpose is service. We've learned that so much on, from this podcast, from every person we've ever talked to, that it all comes back to serving other people. And so the, those of us, you know, that do continue to thrive and continue to do well, I hope that we take an interest in those that are falling on rough times mm -hmm. and that we do go back and serve and we continue to build that community and that we continue to seek out people that need help. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that I want to continue doing is how can we bring others up? Yeah. And, and the people that are falling behind, how can we help them out? If you're the person out there that is is tired of the way things are going politically, tired the way things are going socially, tired of the way um, you know you, you just see people interacting culturally um, and the trends, be the change. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about it anymore. Just go be about it. Be the example. Let other people see you just working to make this country, this world better. Yeah. And th these are the opportunities where just go be about it mm -hmm. and, and people will follow. Be the leader. Like yep. there's a leader inside of every single person listening to this, every single person. Go be a leader. You're created to lead people to something better. Go do it. Yeah, I think Jocko talks about it's, uh, was it Jocko or maybe it was Andy Frisella talks about 360 leadership. No matter where you are in, the, in an organization, where you fall in line, you have somebody in front of you, behind you, and to your left and right 
that you can lead. Yep. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a warehouse worker. It doesn't matter. Or you're the CEO. It doesn't matter. You have people in your sphere of influence that you can, like you said, that yep. you can be a leader to. Yep. So what actions are you taking? Yep. How are you exemplifying? And again, it's okay to struggle, mm-hmm. but how do you work through that struggle? Yeah. And that's what I hope people focus on right now is that ability to lead. Because again, we're all going to get squeezed here. So what are you really truly made of? What's going to yeah. come out when you do get yeah. squeezed? Yeah. So Scott, I don't know about you guys, but um, having the prospect of a, an economic downturn has made me kind of take an inventory of my friends and family that might be in vulnerable situations. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, one of the things that I want to do for them is just be generous with what I can be mm-hmm. generous with. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking around. I've, I know I've got some family members that are going to be absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. But then I have others that I'm, you know, kind of planning on, hey, I might have to help them out. Might have to throw them a couple hundred bucks a month or might have to help them buy food or whatnot. But I think that, you know, if we can step up to the plate and mm-hmm. be generous with what we do have and what we yes. are able to give, mm-hmm. it'll definitely bridge the gap if you do have differences with those people. Yeah. No, I think that's awesome because, again, 2020, you, you said earlier, yeah, some people, a lot of people lost their job, but there's some sectors and businesses sure. that have had all-time great yeah. past couple growth. of years. Yeah. And so to Scott's point, if, that, if, you're, if you're in that category that you've done better than ever, mm-hmm. why don't you seek people out that – because, yes, you work hard. Yes, you do all that, but there's such an element of luck to that. Why did the pandemic attack certain sectors and not others? Because there were people that were working really hard in the entertainment yeah. industry, for instance. Yep. And they got crushed yep. by no fault of their own. Yeah. Hospitality. Hospitality yeah. got crushed by no fault of their own. Yep. So to Scott's point, it's like, for whatever reason, we were the lucky ones that survived through. And our businesses took off, or what, you know, if this is you listening so how do you seek out those that weren't as fortunate? Yeah, and, and generosity too, man, I think that's perfect. Like it, it, and it doesn't have to be monetary. Right. It, it can be, hey, like right now, and I love that, look, I'm gonna take an inventory. Like who, um, who do I feel or know is positioned well and who do I know that may be vulnerable? Hey, like let's, let's go and uh, help address this if you don't see any prevention or mm-hmm. proactivity um, from them. Like, Let's, let's start building a plan. Let's, let's, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my experience and my and expertise, whatever it is, whether you are great with finances or not great with finances, whether you're great with prospecting jobs or not, whether you're great at real estate or not, whatever sector you're good at that they can use some help in, take some time mm-hmm. and pour into them so that, look, if this really does take a turn and the bottom falls out, okay, at least they've been thinking and preparing about it, uh, preparing for it so that, hey, that blow isn't, isn't mm-hmm. as significant. Yeah, and, and one of my biggest flaws, maybe my biggest flaw is how selfish I tend to get in Super scenarios. Super selfish. Because <laughs> I, like right, right now, I tend to think, okay, how can I accrue more yeah. and be okay and store up more? Yeah. Whereas you and Scott, y'all are the type that just naturally, you're naturally givers. For me, it takes more effort to be yeah. a giver. Mm-hmm. And so I, I love that I don't think it's natural, though. I don't, I mean, do you think so? No, I think it's something that I definitely had to learn over time. Yeah. I've, I've watched, um, you know, like my parents set a really good example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They survived 2008 fairly well. Uh-huh. Um, and they were very generous with the, the community of people that they were in. Mm-hmm. And that just kind of set the example. So I had to look up to them and kind yeah. of recognize See, I love that. And I hope, I hope a lot of people take that exact mentality. And that's, I'm telling myself this because my tendency when crisis and it's not crisis, but my tendency when struggle hits is Mm -hmm. to look within and, and really get small Mm -hmm. and really lean out and really think, okay, how can I take care of me and mine? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to have the mentality of, no, I have been taken care of. I have done well. Yeah. How can I serve others? Yeah. How can I give to others? and, And I think it's important that you I think that you do, right? It's the, and I feel like I've heard this way too much recently, but I'm going to use it anyways. It's, look, when you're in a situation on an airplane and the oxygen mask comes out, you got to put it on yourself before you can put it on someone else. So yes, like you do have to be in a position that you can help. Like you do have to take care of you, you and your family first, right? And I understand that. And, but 
But whatever extra resources you have, and again, it doesn't have to be monetary. Mm -hmm. It can be just with your time. It can be with your uh, knowledge, experience, relationships, whatever it is. Then that's when you can you can go do that and encourage because everybody has an abundance of something, mm -hmm. right? You have relationships that's that can help point. someone else out. You have um, expertise that can help someone out. Like whether it's going to help helping someone fix a fence, mm -hmm. whether it's um, driving someone somewhere, whether it's letting someone borrow your car, whatever it is. Shout like, out to Tyler for letting me borrow his truck yesterday. Uh, by the way, yeah, <laughs> we're going to talk about that off air. That, uh, yeah, that Venmo was not. <laughs> Not received well. <laughs> um, and uh, and so, uh, I mean, again, you have to take care of yourself. I get it. Um, because nobody's going to ever expect you to give yourself into poverty. Mm. Never happened, by the way. I don't think yeah. anybody's ever given into poverty unless it was uh, intentional. No, I can really literally think of one example. Uh, but it's not it's not important right now. But yeah, no, you're right. Oh, I love it here. <laughs> no, there was a there was a Chris. He was actually a great inspiration. I forget. Cal, what was his name? He was a famous uh, religious singer, and he literally made millions of dollars a year. And he gave away literally everything except for twenty four thousand dollars. He lived off of I think at the time that was the poverty line, uh -huh. and that's all he lived off of was twenty four thousand yeah. dollars a year because yeah. he wanted to give. Now again, but maybe, he gave to to right. get into poverty. Right. That's the like that's that, that's different than like hey, I'm just gonna you know <laughs> hey here's a thousand dollars you right, get a thousand dollars you yeah. get like you're there's nobody that's like donated and that was the reason that they were broke right like yeah, there's other reasons that if you gave that's not that wasn't the direct result of it but point is is you can give something somewhere. No. I, I think that was a phenomenal point that you made that it doesn't have to be monetary. Mm -hmm. The fence example. Mm -hmm. Think about somebody, hey, I, I just, I really can't afford to repair my fence right yeah. now. Remember when you were in poverty and I had to go fix your fence? That's, Remember that's that? what I'm saying. <laughs> we were sitting ready to sell our house. Didn't want to buy a new fence. So Tyler came over. Oh, but, but seriously, that's, yeah. a, that's a great example of something. Yeah. Sm if you have that skill, yeah. if you're a handy person, uh -huh. Hey, I'm just going to help a friend out. Yeah. They can't afford to pay somebody to do it. Yes. So I'm going to go help them out. That is a yeah. beautiful example of community coming together mm -hmm. and helping each other out, whether yep. it's monetary, whether it's through time, whether it's through skill. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. And, and that maybe, maybe a final thing we should say on this is how many times in your life have you faced something that you've just way overblown how bad it's going to be? Oh, my gosh. And it never ends up being yeah. as bad as you think. Yeah. Even as bad as it may get. Yeah, it's probably not as bad as what you're playing it up in your head. Yeah. And so I want to encourage everyone listening right now that, yes, there's a lot of fear right now. Yes, there's a lot of stress. My my educated, experiential guess is it's not going to be as bad as what you're playing up in your head. Yeah. Because what you're playing up in your head by design is meant to be bad so that you take action. Yeah. And so that's why I don't want this episode to, and I hopefully it has been encouraging, but I don't want this to be a, oh, these guys are saying everything's going to go downhill. Yeah. It's going to be horrible. Yeah. We don't know that. We have no idea what's going to happen. Uh -huh. And probably more likely than not, what I have in my head is not even going to be realized yeah. anyway. I think we can end with this. Uh, there's a, a great philosopher. Um, uh, he's out of the north. Midwest, north, out of Wisconsin, a small town, Green Bay, California native. Um, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> relax. Relax. <laughs> R, didn't he spell it? R E L A X. <laughs> Probably. Relax. But just take a breath. Um, don't be consumed by the unknown. Don't be consumed with the inevitable. I mean, if it's inevitable that we're going to hit something, there's nothing that you're going to do that's going to stop it by stressing. So take care of your business, prepare whatever you've got to do, uh, but make sure that your foundational truths, what you really truly believe in, whether it's fitness, whether it's family, whether it's um, your profession, whether it's your faith, make sure that those are solid because those are what's going to carry you through whatever lies ahead of us. Great. Scott, any closing, closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, I don't know about you guys, but as a, as a fellow guy, men don't share how they're doing with their buddies if they're struggling. Mm. So it might be a good opportunity for us to reach out to our close friends and say, Hey That's man, good. 
how you doing? Like, yeah, are yeah. you are you in a good spot if something were to go bad? Mm-hmm. Um, but just you know, should check in, just yeah. Yeah. see that. how they're doing. That's, That's good. Point. I love that. It's a great point. Right. And then lastly, what you can do is you can subscribe and rate five stars to the One Shot mm-hmm. Podcast because That's we're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. We're going to be here through this whole process. We're going to be here for years to come, whether you like it or not. <laughs> we're continuing on. And hopefully this can be a source of, again, not escape for you, but a source of hope, a source of encouragement for you, a place that you can go to, like Scott said, and, hey, how are those guys doing? How am I doing? And, and how can I reach out to my community and make my community better through right. this? So the sky is not following, despite what, you know, CNBC and Fox News and, and CNN will tell you. We're going to be okay. We're going to survive this. That's right. If, like you, like Tyler said, if you just relax. Relax. We appreciate you guys. We hope you have a great rest of the weekend, and we will see you next week.